Virtuous Mariners escape with a 7-6 victory by refusing to exploit personal data to satisfy fan preferences. Tech isn't always better than no tech. In my naive teenage years, I recall being impressed by the work a friend was doing on behalf of a major software company. Instead of making random choices, advertisements can be better matched to each user's unique preferences and interests based on their online activity. It's a reasonable enough premise, and one that has gained traction across the globe in the last 10 years or so. As a result, my browsers will be filigreed with a tri-colored hoodie t-shirt whenever my bratwurst of a thumb thumps on a particular Instagram post for a moment too long, which I am pretty sure would serve as an internationally understood request for someone anyone to please kick my ass. Rare is the company that has not adopted this practice, and many businesses today rely significantly on the user data they can gather and sell in order to both support themselves and other businesses and to effectively serve their customers. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for sports news update like this one. In this regard, the Seattle Mariners have been iconoclasts. Seattle has steadfastly refused to create a squad that consistently and handily wins baseball games, despite constant user comments and data contributions, both requested and unrequested. The Minnesota Twins were defeated 7-6 tonight, and while it could have been considered a cruise control triumph, Paul Sewold saved the day late on, echoing their one-run victories in 2021 and 2022. On the other hand, and more significantly, this was a key victory the MAS took away from the first-place Twins while tempting catastrophe like a mythological Hellenic hero defying the gods, with Minnesota starter Sonny Gray cruising for much of the evening. Although they were hardly gods, Minnesota's lineup repeatedly tested Logan Gilbert, who struggled to retire hitters and saw his pitch count rise due to foul balls and extended innings even as he worked his way up to a decent line that he later described as meeting the bare minimum. The MAs were staring squarely at another dismal start to a series as Gilbert stalked off the hill with Seattle down 2-0. Gilbert managed to avoid further harm courtesy to a bold move by Jose Caballero. As the hitters continued to exhibit signs of pressing, the irritation became apparent. The club is conscious that the manner they've played has put the next two weeks under close scrutiny, determining whether they'll be adding or removing from their big league lineup this year, Paul Sewold said recently. After a third-inning strikeout that ended the inning, J.P. Crawford scowled in aggravation, and after Eugenio Suarez whiffed to finish the fourth despite getting on base earlier in the game, he nearly crushed another bat to kindling. Suarez, one of the team's loudest spokespersons, spearheaded efforts to energize the team during Sunday's triumph, and continued to speak out as the game entered the fifth inning today, especially as Scott Surveys acknowledged the team was having trouble early on. They tended to get caught up in trying to be the hero rather than simply passing the baton. However, our team was able to string together a big inning there, so you can't really do that because Sonny Gray is a pretty excellent pitcher and is not going to cave into you. The fifth inning, however was a turning point as Teoscar Hernandez substituted a laser double on a hanging breaking ball for an earlier gip with one out. A string of outstanding plate appearances followed. Ty France overcame a terrible first swing to draw his second walk since June 23. Mike Ford decided not to swing at a pitch that nicked his left big toe, and Caballero laced a single to load the bases and make a huge impact. Sadly, Gray succeeded in getting Crawford to pop out to Carlos Correa at short for out number two in his wake. I haven't seen anything this year that has been an easier source of unhappiness for Julio Rodriguez than having to control his desire to be the hero. Nevertheless, Julio laid off two sliders down and away, and a fastball just above the top rail to drive in a run and advance everyone a station, despite being down 1-2 early on due to an unfortunate foul tip. Of course, Nothing could be less valiant than driving in two runs by fighting off a fastball thrown the other way. Although Seattle would eventually gain a 7-3 advantage on a hit and run by Cal Raleigh and a huge home run by Suarez, this was the pivotal moment this evening. Jard Kalenic takes advantage of an opponent's errors in the team's fourth consecutive at-bat, with the bases loaded. This evening, Minnesota was plagued by shoddy play, with backstop Ryan Jeffers in particular turning in a genuine butcher's performance but the Emmys have routinely accepted such criticism and ignored its ramifications. Instead, by squeezing out plate appearances, punishing a starter on the third pitch of the order, and relying on their best bullpen pitchers to hold the line, the Mariners won this game in their own unique style. They could be listening after all.
Thanks for watching. If like this video, please like, share, and subscribe for more updates.